Hi, I'm John, the banking systems engineer. And about 10 years ago, when I was visiting uh, Great Britain, someone told me about the strikes of the banks in Ireland, where all the businesses started accepting each other's checks and paying each other with each other's checks in anticipation of the banks opening up and then them all clearing. And for a year, the circulation of checks worked. So that's just how a let's would work with a let's checkbook. Instead of people cutting $10 bills to pay stuff, businesses were issuing their own normal checks, which suggests a new way for people to do a let system. Bring an old checkbook with your name, address, phone number on it, and use that as your new let's currency. Just put an hour equivalent to the dollars on the note and it becomes a piece of money. So, we'll follow how our Ireland solved their problems when they're banks. Money Without Banks, Lessons from Ireland by Michael Bowens, August 7th, 2009. On the Irish experience of a bank strike in the early 90s after reading by Michael Linton. Dave Birch, between 1966 and 1976, there were three major all-out bank strikes in Ireland that shut the retail banks for, a, in total, a year. There was a super case study written a few years ago on this called Money in an Economy Without Banks by Antoine Murphy of Trinity. I've sometimes referred to it when challenging people to think harder about how the payment system works, but of course it's taken on a new lease of life in current circumstances and in the context of the utility versus casino strategy discussions. Back to Ireland. The case study notes that about four-fifths of the money supply disappeared because of the bank strikes, so the general public were left with the notes and coins in their pockets and nothing else. How did this society function? Since people could not go to the bank and draw out more money, they developed their own currency substitutes. Some people began using sterling instead, that's UK money, but it was the check that stepped in to keep the economy going. People began to accept checks from each other and these checks began to circulate. The answer, let's checks. In summary, a high, with no interest because you're doing it yourself, in summary, a highly personalized credit system without any definite time horizon for the eventual clearance of debits and credits substituted for the existing institutionalized banking system. Murphy points out that one of the key reasons why a personalized credit system could substitute for cash was the local nature of the circulation, which, as Michael Linton points out, and I make no comment on, was centered on pubs so that the credit risk was minimized. The owners of shops and pubs knew their customers very well and so were perfectly capable of deciding whether to accept checks or just IOUs from those customers. And since the customers also knew each other very well, they too could make sensible decisions about which paper to accept. My conclusion, in local transactions, business can work perfectly well with no currency and no banks. A generation ago, well, you need checks, right? <laughs> a generation ago, Ireland's economy was built up from such local transactions, so people were able to self-organize their own money supply. But, as I think we all understand, in the modern economy, local means something completely different. While none of us know how this is going to pan, there is a clearly redefinition of locality underway. And it has in social networking, virtual worlds, and disconnection technologies as inputs. One of my son's localities is the World of Warcraft. If Zopa were to offer loans in World of Warcraft gold, my son could perform that same function as an Irish publican in the example above and provide an assessment of credit worthiness for avatars he knows. There is nothing particularly odd about this concept. Over on the Digital Identity Forum, the concept of an economy based on reputation has already been discussed. How could these new local currencies be used? Well, the new payment technologies, PayPal, M-Pesa, Ideal, EMV, the last three which I never heard of, do not understand that sterling is a real currency and World of Warcraft gold isn't. Surely a key impact of the transition to efficient electronic platforms, rather than bits of paper, is that currency is just another field in the data set. 
I could use PayPal to send Dave's dollars as easily as to send US dollars. Once again, this may be an unusual idea, but it is not terribly fantastic. Well, it's a let system. So perhaps the idea that alternative money can work in isolated local environments, but not scale, is wrong because both locality and globalization now mean something completely different and there's no reason why interconnection between local money of one form or another via markets cannot operate globally. So the IOUs you're using in Ithaca, those Ithaca hours, they're acceptable in Europe if you want to bring five hours and get a night of accommodations, I'm sure. So I'm not thinking about Lowe's pounds or let's here but mobile minutes, bandwidth, and Tesco money. I never heard of Tesco money. Next time the banks collapse or sterling becomes worthless, we'll get a chance to try some of these ideas out. This entry posted August 7, 2009. Thank you very much. Bye, Michael Bowens.